Hi, I just want to uh, take you for a little short tour through the Royal Australian Mint. This is where we make all of our uh, coins and this is actually the production floor where it all happens. So every Australian circulating coin, including uh, proof coins as well, um, is, well, this is just the circulating coin uh, section down here. We've got a giant uh, one ton capable uh, robot thing arm, you know, how many axes is it? I don't know, five axes arm or whatever. And this picks up these giant barrels and the barrels are actually filled with uh, blanks. So this factory is uh, almost entirely automated. Um, the blanks come in in these uh, barrels and they weigh about 750 kilos each uh, barrel and they contain, I don't know how many uh, blank um, coins, well they're not coins at that stage, they're just called blanks and uh, they're actually, they come via another automated uh, robot which we can't see here but it uh, takes them from storage, brings them in and uh, on a uh, trolley and then the robot arm picks them up and then dumps them into the uh, sorting machine, well these sorters here and you can see there's coins left in the the, like the hoppers over there and then they go into the these bucket elevator things which lift them up and then they go into uh, they're transported somewhere else and they go into um, then the counting machines and uh, stuff like that which um, and then they go into the massive die presses and they're the huge presses there I'll show you in a minute the uh, different effects of the different tonnage of uh, up to 250 tons or something like that we can, oh yeah, there's the automated, uh, there's the automated robot which uh, brings it through the factory like that. So this brings two barrels at a time into, here it comes, and this brings them from the story, well, no, it's coming to pick them up, I think. And it's completely uh, automated, autonomous forklift bot. There it is, lifting the uh, two 750 kilo barrels up at the same time and they contain blanks and for those wondering the uh, presses the dies in the presses the dies actually only last I'm surprised at this dies actually only last um, uh, two barrels worth before the die is uh, they have to change the die over so yeah really quite uh, really quite something anyway there you go that is the uh, factory floor where all Australian coins are made. I only operates during the week. I'm here on a Sunday, so obviously nothing's happening. That is a big moving gantry there, but uh, I don't, don't see how it moves past that uh, and the uh, the bucket elevator there, so not sure what the deal is, but anyway, we can... I'll show you the uh, proofing room, but uh, let's go down here. Here's the different press forces that they actually make. So this is... Uh, um, so five tons, 20 tons up to right up to 120 tons. So you can see that with five tons of press force, there's hardly anything on there at all. And then you start to see it, but on the edges aren't really formed or whatever. And then 40 tons and 60 and 80, and then finally 120. Well, not focus, your mongrel. 120 tons of press force to make a 50 cent coin and of course we started in uh, with our decimal currency in 1966 oh. oh there's some windows over there i'll show you in a minute um this this is the uh machining room i believe this is where they machine all the dies errors in production these index plates and what oh yeah let's check that whoops something something horrible happened there um yeah oops <laughs> And yeah, so this is uh, the machining shop where they manufacture all the uh, dies and um, tooling and whatnot. So it's just as important as the production floor. So here's how they make the reduction punch. And that's just laser done. Let's, and then this is making the dies. But as I said, yeah, they can't believe the dies only last. For two barrel, I mean, there's a lot of coins in the barrels. I don't know how many hundreds of thousands. Um, but geez. Anyway, there's the hobby room. I could be here all day. I mean, this is just nuts. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and then the, the lathe to machine the dies. 
Whoosh. There you go. That's a bad boy. And harden in the dies, of course. And uh, so you put them in the furnace and you harden them and grind in the dies and polish in the dies as well. So, yeah, you know, it's full time just to produce the dies uh, required to make, you know, to actually keep the coinage um, automated machines going. So, yeah, don't know how many barrels they get through a day. I forget. Sorry. But uh, it's very impressive. So the machine, the machining room is bigger than the uh, <laughs> manufacturing room, which is just nuts. So there you go. There's a die for a 20 cent coin. I don't know when we're getting our King uh, Charles coins, but uh, st we're still making the queenies. So, and here is where they, this is where they make the proof coins. So the proof coins, of course, they strike them. You know, the, uh, un the circulator coins, they only strike like once. Bam, with the 120 tons of force. The uh, proof coins, they will actually uh, strike up to six times and then they'll put them in uh, hermetically sealed uh, capsules and whatnot. It depends on which, you know, type of uh, proof coin you actually uh, buy. You can get the her hermetically sealed ones or... Uh, Anyway, the proof coins, they're called numismatics, if you're into the collectibles. It's the numismatics market. But uh, yeah, these are all hand done. Every proof coin is handmade. It's all done here. So it's only a small room, but you know, two, four, six, eight different stations or whatnot. And if we head back here, well, what, what can we see in here? Oh, someone's, someone's down there working. Oh, there, yeah, there you go. They're sorting, sorting some coins. So, can't really see that from here. Yeah, they're doing some sort of shortage there. Not entirely sure. Anyway, I don't know how many different types of coins the Royal Australian Mint make, but it's like just the numismatic market alone is just insane. It's just crazy. Anyway, here we go. And that robot just down in there, the hose on it, that's actually uh, the vacuum, that's one of the last steps in the process that is uh, actually vacuums up, like it's got a suction, it picks up the uh, bags full of coins, like giant up to eight kilo bags of coins, and then uh, plops them on the uh, pallets ready to be shipped out. So yeah, so there, you know, it's, it all happens. Just, in, you know, it doesn't take much floor area to make all the coins for the entire country. Um, I think they've made 9 billion coins total or something like that. Not sure how many per year, but uh, that might have been since 1966, the 9 billion. But, uh, yeah, it's quite a lot. Anyway, it's very cool. If you're ever in Canberra, I highly recommend come to the Australian Mint. Check it out. Now we'll go down and we'll take a look at uh, the history of coinage. Oh, stay tuned. All right, so here's the entire history of Australian currency. The first currency in Australia was actually, um, <laughs> wasn't in official at all, but the, physically the first, you can see, that's actually coral. Um, that's coral off the coast of Western Australia, and they're actually uh, Dutch coins from 1600. You can see they were actually uh, found in shipwrecks. Um, off the coast of Western Australia because the Dutch actually, uh, they didn't settle Australia but you know they had actually visited was New Holland um, and then the first fleet coins, they didn't uh, have the uh, <laughs> forethought to actually bring coins with them so the only coins we had were just like ones that um, you know, the uh, anyone actually happened to bring with them in their uh, pockets on the first fleet so we didn't have uh, much <laughs> If anything, uh, real coinage for the uh, first fleet. But of course, uh, the official coinage was uh, rum. That was uh, the, uh, well, you can Google the rum rebellion and all that sort of stuff. But anyway, our first uh, proclaimed uh, coins, and this was, um, that's um, Herschel, I believe. Um, he actually uh, was a forger, and he, uh, he came over on the first fleet. He was actually a uh, criminal because he had forged coins but they got him because he had a certain skill set and they got him to uh, manufacture um, some coins for them 
and you can see, famously, one of the rarest uh, coins around. There's only a few hundred of them uh, still left, I think. And that's the holy... Uh, these were Spanish dollars, so they actually ordered... Um, they tried to order uh, coins from um, the Royal Mint in, in England and they went, oh, sorry, can't do it. Um, we've got a coin shortage at the time and uh, so we can't send you any. So what they did, the uh, New South Wales government at the time, they ordered um, uh, Spanish uh, dollars like this and they uh, punched out the middle. So the middle, so it became the holy dollar and then the little bit they punched out became the dump and that was our first, um, uh, you know, official coinage. Anyway, very famous coin, the Holy Dollar. So if you've got one of those in your collection, um, yeah, you're doing pretty well. Anyway, and then, of course, uh, then we got the uh, British stuff. And, um, you know, pounds, six, you know, uh, <laughs> threepence, sixpence, shilling, you know, florins and all those sort of rubbish. Um, <laughs> We don't do those anyway. They lasted a while, but uh, yeah, they're like you know, based on a thousand-year-old system. And of course, the gold rush happened, and uh, we could start producing our own gold coins. And uh, there's a replica nugget. It's not a real jobby, but uh, and Port Phillip, and then our gold. Um, some of our original uh, kangaroo coins. Very cool. And love to have one of those in my collection. And then we've got some of the first Australian sovereigns here. Check those out. So, very nice. And we've got more sovereign gold coins here. Very schmick. And then when Australia became Australia in 1901, um, yeah, we had to start making our own stuff in 1990. And then we've got the half penny, the three penny, the florin, the shilling, sixpence, and, you know, all the rest of it. And we're still in the pre-decimal era. So there we go. We've got King George. And we've got our first Queen Elizabeth uh, the second coins. And we're almost at the end. And then it's, yeah, we use those. <laughs> Love the little wallets there. Look at that. <laughs> Terrific stuff. <laughs> End of the shillings and pence. Anyway, yeah, we had to go around, had to get away from that, and so we went to the decimal system. Love the we leather wallet. Check it out. But these are actually some of the first prototype coins that uh, our Prime Minister, Robert Menzies, actually took around personally um, to show off uh, to you know, <laughs> various uh, you know, government officials and kings and queens and whatnot. Um, yeah, so that's, it looks like they're the original ones that uh, he personally carried. Very cool. Anyway, those are the first prototypes and then, ta-da, decimal coinage system. Started with the one cent, which we don't have anymore, of course, and uh, two cents, yep. But no, the decimal uh, changeover in 1966 was a massive deal. And, of course, these were uh, famously designed by... Uh, Stuart Devlin and um, he became world famous because here's some of his original design uh, they were designs which they were considering um, but they originally but then they went with these coins and uh, back in 1966 these co caused an absolute uh, <laughs> you know mass hysteria around the world because people were used to or weren't used to are these radical uh, realistic design animal coins so we actually pioneered these so um yeah Stuart Devlin went on to design like a ton and it looks like they've got some yeah yeah there's his original artwork isn't that fantastic anyway he went on to design like uh, coinage and um other notes and stuff for like I don't know like dozens and dozens of countries um he became absolutely uh world famous for designing uh coinage but yeah Australia were uh, the first to uh, do, you know, radical design coins like this. And everyone went, whoa, we really like those. So, yeah, a lot of other countries uh, followed suit, but Australia still has the best coinage, best note design, everything else. We're world famous for it. And then, of course, the polymer notes. Um, yeah, famous for our polymer notes. We bet they're, they're the older uh, style ones. We do have the newer style one with the clear strip and everything. There's just one last look at the machining shop for those interested. And there we go, look at that. So it's like got a polishing end on polishing wheel. You can see like a pink end on that. Looks like it 
So I don't know. But... Curious to see the Sydney Olympic uh, gold medals. There it is. Uh, I don't know if that, I presume it doesn't belong to anyone. It was like a spare that they uh, produced, but there you go. Gold, silver, and a bronze from the best Olympics ever, the Australian 2000 Olympics. I think everyone acknowledges that. And there's the, uh, the Valor coin for the uh, Victoria Cross. And, you know, we, we do lots of, like, really cool uh, designs. They're not all circular. I can do triangular designs like that. I don't know how many, like, the, yeah. <laughs> those, like, Sky Series, Southern Cross Sky Series coins. And, oh, if you get into the numismatic uh, coin market, it's just, you know, <laughs> it's... It's absolutely endless. I, as, as an investor, I would not recommend it. Numismatics, you really have to know what you're uh, buying. Just a pro tip there. So, yeah, um, I'm more of a bullion guy myself, but I do have a bunch of numismatics. Um, so maybe, leave it in the comments down below if you want me to do. I did a poll on this one, so if, but I think people thought I was talking about crypto coins, but I actually have quite a few uh, numismatic coins that I can... Uh, show you including uh, proof ones so I can show you some uh, proof coins up close let us know in the comments down below if you'd like to see that but anyway this is very cool I highly recommend if you're in camera to check out the Royal Australian Mint it's terrific stuff of course there's the Perth Mint um, as well that famously makes uh, a bullion uh, coins and stuff like that but all our legal tender is made here in the Royal Australian Mint. So we basically have, like, you know, like, like the Perth Mint's world famous for its bullion coins. They do make uh, numismatic uh, coins as well, of course, but uh, and there's a press from the old uh, Melbourne Mint. Of course, this hasn't been the only mint to, to produce coins, but this produces all the uh, decimal uh, coins, but that one uh, produced from 1916 to 19. 64 produced uh, sovereign coins so there you go anyway i hope you enjoyed that uh, little tour of the royal australian mint i love that <laughs> the big robot arm is terrific and yeah i can't believe the dies only last two barrels two barrels anyway they're cho absolute chocker with blanks um so can you, can you see some blanks in that tub there that hopper I'm not sure but uh, anyway very cool huh if you liked it give it a big thumbs up catch you next time oh well, there we go one of the barrels has a hundred thousand blanks well in this particular case of one dollar coins I'm sure that would uh, vary depending on the uh, size of the blank but uh, there you go <laughs> that is a key. Very impressive barrel, but yeah, one of the dies only lasts two barrels worth to punch. Unbelievable.